number 27 and once again I am in a Pantera. Now I've already done a couple of these. I did an early car, so a narrow body car. I also did a late 1988 GT5 wide body which looks similar to this. Panteras though, more than any other supercar of this time, tended to be modified. I think it's because of their sort of Ford underpinnings that make it really an easy thing to do. And I really wanted to try one of the more sort of modified cars and this is just such a car. The thing is though, this has a, a stroked Windsor engine which is 401 I think cubic inches in European language 6.7 litres and it puts out 600 horsepower so a little bit of a daunting beast although it's an early car i.e. it is a 1972 it's obviously had the archers put on it at some point because of the amount of power available i think these weighed about 1100 kilos correct me if i'm wrong running 600 horsepower that is a lot so i'm not going to do my usual come out of the little junction on the little road and do a pull there i'm going to go to a slightly bigger road and a pool coming up that so hopefully we can put down all the power that this beast is capable of. My thoughts in the meantime are that like the other GT5 that I drove you'd think that this would be a real handful. I mean the width of those tyres is just phenomenal. Three, four, fives I think it's running at the back and yes when you're uh, maneuvering parking speeds the steering is heavy but it's not it's not impossible it's not terrible and the moment you get going it lightens up immediately this one has had the floor slightly lowered which is fantastic because it means that for once I fit in a Pantera without having to do any contortions of course at the front the pedals are still way offset to the right as is the wheel really but um, on the whole this is probably the most comfortable Pantera I've been in. Suspension at these speeds feels absolutely, sort of feels quite pliant really which is a surprise. You expect these cars to feel like skateboards but this is another one that doesn't. I believe that this has Olin suspension all round which I think will really be helping with the handling. And what an amazing looking car as well. It's just in this colour uh, it's a sort of a pearlescent white which is a slightly, it's obviously a modern colour but you don't realise until you get up close and I think it looks absolutely stunning. Now on this bit of the road, I know it's going to be a bit of a handful because it's bumpy, lots of little camber changes so it's going to move around but you know what? bad John who owns it thank you so much for bringing it down John he told me yeah you know it's gonna move around with the camber because the front tires are so wide as well I think they're two eight fives at the front and so I was prepared for it and it does move around a little bit but it's not particularly disconcerting at least not at these speeds being an early car this also has the more Spartan interior. I do prefer the interior on the later cars with the wood panelling, the different instrument pod, but this one, to be fair, has got some really nice touches. So the whole dash, which is normally black plastic, is covered in leather. Um, the seats have been redone. I think these are Mazda MX-5 seats. I don't know if they're Mark 1, Mark 2, but we believe that's what they are. They've obviously been retrimmed. They seem to work well with these cars and also help with the, the clearance. You need to sit as low as you possibly can. Now the engine is running all forged internals, a massive holly carb. Let's go, little pull here. any other Pantera I've driven. I think that um, John was telling me that the Windsor engine that this is running rather than the Clevelands they tend to be a lot revier. Obviously this has been extensively modified 
but apart from the power, the most surprising thing, obviously it has huge amounts of torque like the other engines, but the most surprising thing is that it's it's actually pretty revvy. I mean, it's redlined still just before six, but I didn't see what revs it sort of picked up from, but there's a big step in power as you rev it through, which is very, very different to the other Panteras that I've driven. We're gonna do it again with a little bit more verve now, coming out at this junction, and again, see how it does, but yeah, it's a quick thing. 600 horsepower, by the way, that's not made up. Those are dyno figures that John got, so it's not just sort of plucked out of thin air. and that's such a strange feeling for one of these American engines because normally they just go they just go everywhere but there's no there's no point revving them they don't you know they don't this is this feels very very different in character On the part of the road that's very bumpy so it doesn't favor this car but one of the tricks that Panteras seem to have that I've noticed despite the fact that they are so low and wide and menacing looking is that when you're in it it sort of seems to shrink around you and it doesn't feel like as big a car as you'd think from the outside with those wide front tires but as the road is smoothing out very very nice those brakes the Wilwood brakes are absolutely phenomenal and once that front end hooks up as well it seems to it just conveys so much information one of the things that has always annoyed me about these cars is that the instruments are totally obscured by the steering wheel and I, I don't really know what they were thinking. They put them quite wide apart as well. I think the original wheel may have been a bit bigger than this, which would have covered them a bit less, but all the same, that's a crazy thing. Very, very nice on this bit of flowing road. Getting into a bit of a groove now. So easy to drive because that engine, despite the monumental power, it's got the torque. You just kind of leave it in gear. What is it now? It's in fourth gear. Just saunter down. Still make good progress. <laughs> Definitely quite front endy this car. And it's odd because you go into the corner and initially it doesn't bite, but as you apply the throttle, it really, the front end just bites and it tightens its line quite noticeably. You have to be on your toes, I think, a bit of a handful. Tuscan a couple of weeks ago and I christened that the UK's most uh, dangerous but exhilarating car and I have to say that from Italy this probably runs it a very close second there's just so much power there and it's definitely a car that you need to get used to the steering is great but 
you kind of have to get in sync with it because initially it doesn't feel like it particularly wants to bite very hard but as soon as you're into the corner and you apply a bit of throttle it really you feel like it sort of digs in at the front and wants to turn in harder and the back definitely feels as if it will uh, it'll come out pretty easily it did there earlier on a tight corner and uh, I'm not sure what it would be like to catch if it came out properly. That was only a little bit of a hint. The gearbox is the five-speed ZF unit and it's great really. It has the nice gate, so it has that Ferrari click-click and some of the gears. It's got a little bit of weight to it. It's mechanical. It suits the rest of the car really. It's quite physical. I think on a smooth road it would be much easier to handle but on these little roads the way it's being pulled apart by the campers is definitely a little bit unsettling all the same what an experience and the brakes are just phenomenal they're really powerful and you get good feel i would still have probably preferred a slightly firmer pedal but all the same they absolutely do what you need them to do and it is just incredible what you can do with these cars a Ferrari of the same era to, to get it to this state of tune like a 308 or something like that just wouldn't be possible or if it is possible I know there's one in the States um, which is running a turbo setup but you know and is putting out probably similar numbers but it's a far more complicated and expensive thing to achieve I think than with this and the engine on this is still so drivable it's so well mannered it tickles along really well the only thing I suppose when it gets hot I think there's a bit of fuel evaporation so on tick over it can stall but apart from that it's really easy the clutch has a little bit of weight to it but it's progressive so all in all an absolutely monstrous older car that's pretty easy to drive at normal speeds which is a great combination Driving it quickly though definitely requires skill and I think probably skills beyond my levels to be completely honest. Maybe once you've spent a bit more time with it. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have a car that you would like me to do a review on, one of your own cars, then please get in touch. Send me a message, this is the best address. If you want to see some of the other Pantera's videos, I'll put them up now as well. Thank you so much and see you for the next video.